money, 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 money. So today I'm going to talk about, you guessed it, money. This is a subject that comes up all the time inside of my mastermind program and all my coaching containers with my private clients. I'm a business coach. I help you start and grow your business and make money so that you can be fully supported doing work that you love. But so many people are constantly saying to me, all my clients say, I have a money block or Maybe they have tons of money, but they still have issues with money, with receiving money, with giving money, with spending money. The relationship to money for a lot of human beings tends to be this really weird, taboo, deep, deep relationship. It's almost like sex and psychedelics. It's up there with these taboo topics that people want to talk about, but don't know how to talk about and maybe avoid talking about and avoid dealing with altogether. And one of my clients recently asked me uh, to talk about healing money blocks. Like, how do I heal money blocks? So I'm going to just share my own personal journey with money. And I don't really even like to use the word healing. Healing. Um, Yeah, sometimes I use it. And yes, I do understand what it means to heal. But I would rather think of it as more of a, a transmutation of belief systems of energetics living inside of our our being, you know, like your mind, your consciousness, your body, your DNA. And I don't know, sometimes I feel like, is there really anything to heal? Because you're actually very whole and perfect exactly as you are. So healing, I feel like sometimes is a very low vibration term, even though I do know what it means and I do use it. But let's let's call this um, transmuting stories and limiting beliefs around money and clearing, you know, these these blocks. And, you know, let's let's dive into this. What is a block? Really? You know, people say, oh, I'm blocked. I'm blocked. I'm blocked when it comes to money. I'm like, well, are you blocked or is it actually just something in your thinking and your programming? You know, there's energetic blocks in your chakras, maybe, and maybe there's some blocking your root chakra, which is connected to money. Or maybe it's your programming, which is a completely different conversation. So I like to just get really real here and have you start to question, like, are you really blocked or is there there's something else here in your mindset, your thinking, your programming? And then, you know, maybe there are ancestral blocks or past life blocks or actual um, energetic blocks when it comes to money. And I'll talk about this. So I, I have a very interesting family background. So as you can probably tell from my last name, it's Weinstein. My dad was, was a non-practicing Jew. I was actually raised Christian um, by a non-Jewish mother. So I never actually identified as being Jewish until a later age when I found out that Jewish, being Jewish, was actually considered um, more of like a race than a religion. I just thought it was a religion when I grew up. You know, I didn't really know. Um, So I do come from this Jewish family, which has Jewish ancestry. And please forgive me if you're being offended by this already, but it's part of my own story. And um, The Jewish part or not doesn't really matter. What matters is that that side of my family had a lot of scarcity. This side of my family, um, my dad's side, my dad, my dad raised me and my family to believe that we were very poor, <clears throat> to believe that um, we had to constantly turn off every light behind us because it costs too much money to have the lights on. And the heat was always on low because it costs too much money and you don't get an allowance or you don't get money because we don't have it or you can't buy anything. You can't get new school clothes when you're seven years old because of the money. So I was raised very scarce. I was raised with like anxiety around money. Um, but it's weird because, you know, we had a house, we had food, we lived in suburban California, I went to school and everything else seemed okay. And I remember it was when my brother told me at an older age, like when I was like 14 or 13, um, I forgot what happened, but my brother actually said to me, you know, Beth, we're not poor. (laughs) 
And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I thought we were. I thought it was like, I thought we were kind of a, you know, I thought everybody else was okay. And then we were kind of the ones that was like having a harder time. So that's just to give you some background around um, the, the programming I was raised with. Um, <clears throat> you know, I remember at a very young age, having a desire to work hard and make money. Like I used to, and I, you know, back then it was for fun. It was like my friend and I used to sell things on the street and have little businesses. We used to play this game where we pretended we had businesses. And this is, I think, how I became an entrepreneur. Um, I always saw myself as an entrepreneur. And we would sell things. and It'd be so exciting to make our own money. And then I had chores. I had to do work around the house where then I earned money. And if I wanted something, I had to, um, you know, work for it and save up for it and then save birthday money and Christmas money. And then that was pretty much it. And so I had this this ethic in, instilled in me at a very young age that was uh, work equals money. Working hard equals more money. Working more equals more money. This was a program that was taught to me. This was not inherently in my nature, right? So I share this story just to start somewhere, to give an example of um, looking back into our our family line and just this immediate life. Like, how were you raised when it came to mo- comes to money? So this is my process, and I highly encourage you to maybe give it a try. So. You know, when I was older and started making my own money from jobs, you know, and maybe let's say my first salary job out of college, um, you know, I always had like decent jobs. I wasn't making a ton, but I like figured things out. And the one thing I found over many, many years, the more I made, um, it didn't seem to matter. I can never hold on to the money. So, you know, in my corporate career, I got to a place where I was doing pretty well, making like six figures or nearly six figures. And um, but for some reason, I like couldn't hold on to any of it. It was like money in, money out, money in, money out. And it didn't matter if I made twenty five thousand dollars or one hundred thousand dollars. And at some point, I started to realize there's there's probably something going on here. Because I remember watching my brother and the way he um, had money in and money out too. And I thought it was really interesting because he made a lot of money and didn't seem to have much to account for it either. And I was like, wait a second, there's there's something with me. Like there's there's a um, there's some psychological, uh, you know, program running in the background. Back then, I didn't know it was called a program. And I started noticing that, you know, I had this desire for more money and Every time I made more and manifested more, it would just kind of disappear. So that's that was the beginning of me really starting to take a step back and say, wow, I wonder if there's something else. Like, what is the reasoning for this? And so I started really diving deeper into my family history and this belief that, um, you know, money was really hard to come by. Money took a lot. You had to like really suffer to make money. That was the main belief I was taught. And I started really just kind of contemplating, like, well, why is it that I'm still making, you know, still working hard and not, you know, like still making more, but I'm not actually getting more money. Um, And that was where I started to dive into this. And this is the long journey into what I would call healing my money blocks, And I will be candid now and say that I made a pretty decent amount of money last year, the year before, the year before um, in the multiple six figure range. And of course, I'm on a mission to make more. You know, that's not why I do what I do, but I would like more just to be able to do it, you know, just because we are humans and we're here to constantly be expanding, you know, and I do believe in this path of expansion. And I also have it in me to um, serve more people, help more people create more impact and be a leader in, in this world in some way. And, um, very often what comes with, you know, helping more people and creating more impact is also more money. So as I became an entrepreneur, my first experience was really diving deep into this giving and receiving, So I had two businesses before this one. And when I first got to the place of asking an investor for money, 
I had experienced something that I had never really experienced before um, besides maybe my childhood where I started to actually witness myself and all the beliefs that came up. You know, I'll, I'll preface this by saying I had a meditation practice. I was, you know, on a psychedelic path for a very long time. I have always been um, going to therapy. I had studied psychology in college. Like I've always been very inquisitive about how my mind works. So I'd always had this path of being able to observe my thinking and observe from a place of, you know, removing my my mind as like Beth in the, you know, like here I am in this mind, but engaging the observer mind, which is taking a step back and observing myself. And I started to observe myself getting really activated by having to ask others for money. And even by the idea of borrowing money from a savings account or using money that was from my family or whatever it was. And it was really um, activating and it was really hard. And mind you, I wasn't asking for that much money. Like in the grand scheme of things, investors usually give people a lot of money. I'm talking, I was asking for like $5,000 here, you know, 3000 here. My dream was like 20000 but in the end, my investor gave me less than that. And, um, you know, I had been working with psychedelics pretty regularly, and I had started reading books about this. You know, I took it upon myself to start really exploring, like, what is this what is this thing around money? And I remember I was introduced to someone who wrote a book. I forgot what it was actually called, but it was something about, like, the art of money or, you know, something like that. <clears throat> and that was my first foray into, wait a second. Oh, there's something here with money. It's not just like a thing that you get from working. It's much deeper than that. And that's when I really started to explore the energetics of money and the belief systems around money. And I read this other book that I still recommend today called, I think this one, this, this name I'm getting right, The Art of Receiving. I think that's what it's officially called. Um, or no, sorry, The Power of Receiving. Uh, I am so sorry I forgot the author's name. It's a woman. I want to say Amanda. <laughs> Anyways, I'll put the link here in the show notes so you don't have to even look it up. So I read this book and I went into an ayahuasca ceremony. And I started by first exploring receiving and what that really meant. And, you know, by then I had already had this idea of, you know, the, our birthright is to be abundant and receive everything that we want. It is our birthright to be happy and to be free and love life and have all the peace and joy and um, static love that we desire. You know, I knew that intellectually already at that point. And I still to this day believe it is our birthright to have whatever we want. We can really create whatever we want, whether it's money, love, happiness, joy, business that you love. I do believe it is the human birthright to have whatever you want, including money. So, but money was a hard one. I was like, but you know, like I have to earn this or I have to like market for it or I have to figure this out or um, I have to charge a certain amount, but, um, really that book and then going deep into the, the psyche and the family patterning, like the ancestral patterning, the programming I was raised with, that's what really started to unravel and heal these money blocks. So money blocks are not just things you have to live with forever. I actually believe that we don't have to live with any blocks and I put blocks in quotes, blocks, traumas, stories, things that happen to us. Like, yes, there's things that happen. We can't deny it. It's in the past. You process it, work through it, go to somatic therapy, do the psychedelic work. But at the same time, it comes back to a choice. You can choose to dwell in these blocks or not. You can choose to let the blocks control you or you can choose to be free. And you can choose to go create the life that you want. So anyways, what I started doing with the power of receiving and going into the medicine space and I was working with a somatic therapist. So I was doing regular therapy, regular meditation, reading as many books as I can get my hands on around wealth consciousness, abundance, um, trying to understand abundance and understand money differently and working with sacred medicines as well. And 
bringing this all together. And actually, during my very first ayahuasca ceremony, I saw the whole illusion, you know, like the illusion of everything, the illusion of our reality, the matrix or whatever you want to call it, like the illusion that we are all just here living in. And but we're also creating, co-creating. And I also saw the illusion of money. And I was like, OK, wait, money is not real. Money is just something we all agree on. And that, you know, of course, a lot of you, psychedelics or not, can just see that by like looking at it. But this was many years ago and I didn't really understand like, wow, money is actually just this, this thing, this concept that we agree on. But it's what is real about it. What's the only thing that's real is that we've designed this society that tells us we need this thing to exchange for other things. But in the end, it could just disappear in an instant. It could completely be worthless in an in instant. <clears throat> and what is really real, right? Like, where, what is the reality? So this gets deep, right? So that's what really started it, is really like pondering this question of like, wait a second, if money is just a concept that we all agree on, and it's something that we've now given, um, you know, a determined value to, but it's coming from just the human psyche. It's, you know, like, OK, let's print this piece of a tree and make it worth, uh, you know, this bottle of um, wine. God, I haven't had wine in like a month. Um, but you know what I mean? I'm just using this as an example. So we've created this this agreement. And when you start to look at the root of all of this and see money as what it is, is like anything else, like it's a made up energy, right? It's it's like everything is energy. Every living being in our universe, every tangible item is made up of particles and so is money. So when you really get deep and start at the, the reality of like understanding money, that's where you can start to change your relationship with it. So the next really came into, for me, um, understanding my family history and my programming and how I was raised. And I did a lot of journaling exercises around this. I did, I read all these books, which by the way, all of these money books out there, they all have very similar journaling exercises and you have to do the work. Here's the thing. I don't know about you, but I was programmed very well, right? Like, family I had a certain patterning where I just did my best to be the good girl even though I was always a rebel I was like the good rebel I was the rebel that didn't really get in trouble um never got caught at least so but I you know I was programmed by society I was programmed by um you know attachments to certain things and programmed by uh, living in New York City where it was always about like how much money could you make and I was you know I was constantly surrounded by people whose lives were centered around money 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 so my programming ran very deep and when I started really diving into these stories that I was told along with all these other modalities these integration tools as well as the psychedelic experiences I started being able to see all of this from a different perspective. And this is what I teach inside of my mastermind program as well, is really seeing money and the exchange for your service and your love and your energy in exchange for the money back to see it from a completely different perspective. This is the transmutation. So it's really about having a shift in your thinking. It's not about working more or working harder or doing more. I mean, yeah, there's certain things you can do. Maybe you can raise your rates and maybe you'll make more money or maybe you can um, market yourself more and see if more people come in and say yes to your offerings. But as one of my um, former coaches says, money doesn't come from work, which is true. If money came from work and money came from hard work, then wouldn't everybody who's working at McDonald's make millions of dollars? Um, who do you think works harder? Uh, you know, Elon Musk or um, the guys out there cleaning up garbage on New York City streets and getting up at four in the morning and running a truck and getting out and emptying thousands of gar garbage cans in like zero degree weather, you know, and then like potentially getting hurt on the job when maybe like 
I don't know, an entrepreneur is like, you know, not to say they don't work hard. Trust me, I've worked hard before and I still work hard on, on some level. But, you know, if money came from working hard, then wouldn't every garbage man in New York City be a multimillionaire by now? <clears throat> so that was one programming, right? Like that was one program that was running. And when I went on a dieta in Peru, I forgot which one it was, but I had this this actually, I think it was my first one in 2016 where I had an injury in my body that was really causing me a lot of pain. And I started to connect this injury to the idea of suffering. And I realized that for me, a huge pattern that I was raised with or also ancestral, maybe past life, who knows, whatever you believe in, it really doesn't matter the story behind it. The story is not what matters. What matters is I got to see the pattern of belief that I must have, I must suffer in order to get what I want in life. I must suffer to make money. I must suffer to have love. When good things happen to me, um, maybe I don't deserve it because I haven't suffered enough. Like there was really this belief system. And of course, we all know on an intellectual level, you deserve love, you deserve joy, you deserve happiness. But then Really, are you allowing it in? I mean, it's very simple. We have to just allow it in, receive it in, and be grateful for it. But most people, including me back then, had a really hard time with receiving it and allowing it and allowing it to actually be easy. So I started to dive deep into these. I, I read a thousand books on wealth and abundance and really started to shift my perspective around what it meant. And, you know, there's there's people that have been writing about this since, you know, way back when, late 1800s and probably even way before then, but 1900s about, you know, this idea of creating our reality and um, think, you know, think and grow rich. And I started to really understand that money doesn't necessarily come from business or work. And once I started to see that differently, I could change my whole relationship with money and um, the next level of experiment was to actually really step into this place of doing what I was called to do without having to worry about the money, meaning I went on a full surrender experiment. Actually, it was after that dieta. What I did was I was like, you know what? I had this vision that was life changing. And I said to myself, you know what? What if I just did what I wanted with my work, with my business, with everything, and see what happens. Without attachments to the money, without believing that my work was going to yield me money. But instead, I worked from this place of my heart, which was like, I have to do this. I feel called to do this. And I'll see if the money comes. Trust me, I had money coming in, but I was like ready for more. So what I did was I put aside the attachment to money and I just work from this deeper level place of my heart, my soul, my mission in life. And that's actually when I started making more money. How is that possible? That's when I really had a wake up call where I was like, wait a second here. I let go of the attachment to money. I worked from a deeper place of my heart and soul and yes, of course, like I asked clients for money, like I took payments, you know, and all that, like I had the basics set up. But what I did is I released the attachment and I instead separated out me doing my business from me earning money. I made them completely separate. And it's funny because years and years and years later, I worked with a coach that taught this. And I was like, wait a second, that's exactly what I did way back then. I just did my calling, which was coming from deep within my heart and soul, and then allowed the rest to manifest. And guess what? Money manifests in many different ways. So I do believe what happened is, um, you know, money then started coming to me in other ways that were not directly related to just my business or just my work. You know, like opportunities came in, um, things like fell in my lap, you know, like I manifested money from certain things that I thought would only be, you know, this much, but ended up being like double that amount, you know, like things like that. Um, you know, then, of course, there's the weird magic of money that just comes out of nowhere or, um, 
you know, someone supporting your work or whatever it is. I mean, I have numerous, numerous, numerous stories. But what the key is here is that, first of all, I stayed very present throughout all of this. Presence is key. To really be able to observe your mind and your thinking is number one. And if that you're having trouble with to begin with, like that's where you need to get support. First things first, like calm your mind and be able to observe it. And then start to watch and pay attention to what's actually happening and manifesting in your reality. (coughs) And as you do this, what happens is you get more and more in tune. You start to notice it more and more. And then, of course, the basics like gratitude. Like even at my poorest of poor, like I have been flat out broke multiple times in my life. And even at the poorest place in my life, I was able to still find some level of appreciation and gratitude. Yes, it is hard to get out of that negative mindset where you feel like everything is just hitting all the fan at once. But the key is to tap into what you do have. So at my poorest moments in life, I'll take the most recent poorest moment, which is many years ago, but it's my most recent Um, I still had a roof over my head. I still had water that came out of the taps. I still had a cell phone. I had a bed. I had food. You know, the basics. I had some friends. I had people who would open doors for me. I had friends that had more money at the time, would pay for things. You know, maybe someone would cover the cost of uh, a drink. You know, whatever it was. And that I started to really see as like, okay, I might be broke as hell right now, but I'm still very abundant because there's abundance to be found everywhere. If you cannot find abundance, look outside in nature. Nature is our abundance teacher. Nature is constantly giving and giving and giving. And if you've never had the experience of planting something, a plant that grows food or an herb or a flower, grow something and experience the true nature of abundance. So what I was able to do was just see abundance differently. I was able to see it everywhere, even when I was broke. Like, okay, there is a bird in the tree. There is a tree giving off leaves, you know, like after the winter in the spring, there's, there's sprouts coming up. That to me is like a shift in thinking. So it's like we have to really start with these really deep basics And then train our brain to see things differently. This is the miracle in A Course in Miracles. A miracle is a shift in perception. So you have to start with these deep level shifts in your own perception and then go deep into your own programming. I would highly recommend doing journaling exercises on this. I was doing journaling very often. I was really tapping into the belief system and going over this and processing this with my coaches with healers, with those who are able to talk to me about it and starting to take a step back and see all the programming that was actually running my reality. And then that's where the shifts start to occur. Occur When I started to see that my work was not actually connected to money, that money can come from anywhere, it was like, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to keep doing the work that feels aligned with my soul. And the more aligned I became with who I truly was, The more aligned I was with my authenticity, with my heart, with, you know, spirit coming through me, the more money I'd made over and over and over and over and over. And it's just been upward from there. And really getting deep into the awareness of when the block or an activation would come up around money, like like there would be a charge in my body. So this is where I really love somatic therapy. Um, And I have somatic therapists I can refer you to if you need some where you really tune into your body senses and you can start to sense when there's an activation around like something with money. Or maybe you're scared to invest money into a coaching program or something else. And, you know, um, that's where you can actually feel into, okay, this is scary to invest in my growth. But if I don't invest in my growth, where will I be in a year? Where will I be in five years? Where, where's my life going? And so what happened for me was the pain of not growing and the pain of being blocked and the pain of not making money was becoming more than the pain of, you know, figuring out how to 
transmute it and heal it and get the help I needed. So it's like you have to weigh, do you want these blocks to control you? You know, like that's a choice. Or do you want to start to change them? You know, and to me, like Tony Robbins says this all the time, like people don't really make change until they're in so much pain. I forgot his exact words, but that's what he says. So you really have to stop and ask yourself, okay, I'm in this much pain and I'm sick and tired of it. As my former partner said, you have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Like that's when you'll make the change. And that's what led me to finally like dive so much deeper into it where I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm doing well. I'm witnessing all these things. I'm starting to feel the momentum and I am done. Like I am sick of the struggle and I'm sick of not making enough and I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of being not as abundant as I want to be. And that's where you have to commit to diving in and doing the deep inner work. Because if you haven't been able to shift these blocks, but you're aware that you have them, if you haven't shifted them by now, you have to ask yourself, well, what is going to shift them? You just think one day you're going to wake up and your your blocks are going to go away on their own? Well, if you're 40 years old and they still haven't gone away, like when are they going to go away? Or if you're um, working in a job that doesn't pay you very well and you want to make more money and... You're like, well, it's this job that's not paying me well. Well, then you you have a choice, right? You can stay there or you can leave. You can stay or you can go get a different one. You can stay or go start a business and make way more money. You know what I mean? So I'm just using these as examples of getting to that pain point where you realize like you are not being controlled by your blocks. Your blocks are actually in your control. Now it becomes your choice of what are you going to do to help make this transmutation and try to see all of this differently and live differently and change your mindset, completely shift your mindset from what you know now to what you want it to become. You know, if your mind is limited in this box of what you've been feeling all these years and what you've been thinking, what you feel like you've been blocked by, you're choosing to stay inside of that box. It's your choice. Now you can choose to leave that box and try something new that you've never done before, or you can choose to stay the same. And that's where it really does become work. You know, it doesn't mean it's hard work. I actually find it to be beautiful and fascinating work to really dive deep into these patterns and programs that we're all raised with and to really question, okay, is that true? Like, was I taught that or how do I know this to be true? You know, this is the Byron Katie work, the process, you know, ask yourself, is this true? How do I know it's true? And doing the deeper work, read, read books, listen to audiobooks, get a coach, work with a mentor, um, start to really shift, you know, bring this into your medicine work, start to shift your belief system around giving and receiving and the energetics of money and the energetics of abundance And really start to ask yourself, well, what is this all about? What is abundance? What is true abundance to me? You know, and why is it that there's some reason why I am not receiving money? Because really, if the Elon Musk's of the world or, you know, the Jeff Bezos of the world prove to us that there's limitless abundance, like there is no limit, right? Like we can keep going and going. By the way, not to say that those are good people, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, look, like we've seen billionaires on this planet. I have one friend who's a billionaire. He's actually a cool guy. But, you know, the reality is if these billionaires are able to be billionaires, that means you can too. There's no difference. Like my friend who's a billionaire was not raised any differently than I was. You know, the one thing is, is he's mastered his mindset and he's also like committed. Like he just doesn't, he just puts aside all of his mental stuff, lays it aside, and he's like driven by his mission. And his heart and his mission is what made him, you know, that's where a lot of this money came from. You know, yeah, he works. He works hard. And when you say hard work, it's like, yeah, he's working as hard as me or anybody else. You know, so that's where I say you have to really see this from a larger picture of like, you know, why are you any different than anyone else out there who's making the money you want to make? You know, if I want to make... $555555, $555, Five 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 hundred fifty five thousand dollars this year, which is my first goal. 
Um, you know, I have to really believe that I can. I have to be able to receive it. I have to welcome it in. I have to be grateful for it. And I also have to realize like, okay, well, I know my worth and I know I'm worth it. You know, like I deserve this and I feel good about it because the more money I make, the more money I can put towards causes I believe in, people I believe in, donate the money, um, do big things in the world. The more people I can reach with my business, the more clients I can help. You know, it's all again, like to see this money from a different perspective of an energy that is constantly moving. It's in and out and it's in and out and we attach so much meaning to it. But in the end, like look at the reality of what it is. We've attached all this meaning and this charge and these triggers, just like psychedelics and sex and all these other things that have come up, which thankfully people are getting used to. Like, okay, psychedelics aren't so charged anymore. Maybe sex is not as like taboo to talk about anymore but you know money is still kind of on the on that edge so <clears throat> I just wanted to share this I mean this is only diving into the basics of what I did but <clears throat> and I can send you lots of referrals and and links but this is a huge part of what we do inside of my mastermind program because the reality is is when you are stepping into your soul-based business your heart path and in, in you're really stepping into your calling, like following your heart and learning how to make this into a business that supports you, what happens is now you're driven by something bigger than you. You're driven by what's coming through you. It's not driven by your brain. It's not driven by attachment. It's driven by you being incarnated here at this time in history for a reason. And when you start to really just work from that place of the divine guiding you, what happens is the money comes in and it gets so much easier to receive it because now you're driven by mission. You're driven by your channel guiding the way with the help of someone like me teaching you the right way <coughs> to make it actually work, right? And the 3D tangible world that we live in. And what happens is then the money you receive feels better. You know, you feel okay receiving lots of money for your work, you know, getting paid thousands of dollars for your coaching, getting clients um, saying yes to you. And you're just saying, okay, thank you, universe. May I have some more? Thank you, universe. May I have some more? Thank you. One of my clients made $30,000 in three months with me. And I taught her to say this, like just constantly say like, thank you, universe. May I have some more? And she was like broke when she came to work with me. So just know that if it's available for her, it's available for me, available for all my other clients, it's available for the Elon Musk of the world, it is available to you as well. You are no different. We are all humans and we're all on the same playing field. Now it's just a matter of choice. You know, how do you want to live? Where do you want to work from? What is it you want to create in your reality? So I will do more episodes on money. I love this subject because, of course, so many people get triggered by like, psychedelics and money oh my god but there's a reality you know it's just we have to love it and accept it as if money was um money is the same thing as you know your friend or a little baby it's it's just another energy like we are human beings everything so if you learn to love money and and allow it in and treat it with respect and kindness and you know, see it as you being empowered to put that money towards what you want to be doing in the world or what you want to be, the change you want to be creating and the causes you believe in, then yeah, money is here for great things. You know, we can literally change the world. I keep saying if all the spiritual people on this planet had all the money on this planet, imagine how our planet would look and just really let that sink in. If all the awake psychedelic entrepreneurs out there made a ton of money. Imagine where this money would go back into circulation. It'd just be incredible. You know, this is the transformation and, and healing and transmutation that I really want and pray for this planet and pray for you. So anyways, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this first episode on money. We'll dive deeper into it eventually. And please reach out if you have any questions. And I would love to know if you like this or if you got triggered by it. Or if you're like, oh my God, she shouldn't talk about money and psychedelics. Let me know. 
And in the meantime, be sure to check up, check out my upcoming programs. I am currently enrolling in my group mastermind. I also have the seven week intensive that's probably launching in April or May. So please be on the lookout. And if you haven't already, just be sure to download my free gifts at my website, BethAWeinstein.com. Thank you so much and lots of love and abundance to you.